Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Hi. Hi. Hold on. Let me turn your can... audio up just a tiny, tiny bit here. Uh, what are your pronouns real quick? My pronouns. My pronouns are he, him. All right. Classics. The good, the old classics. Classic. Good, good stuff. Been around so, for a while. Yeah, they've been around for for quite a while. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I wish I could hear. Maybe I can get your little icon so people can have a thing. Um, oh, that's fine. All right, welcome, welcome to the the, the Demon Mama show. Um, thanks for inter for uh, uh, giving us your pronouns and everything. We just came hot out of a segment talking about metaverse, um, which was super interesting. And uh, I'm happy to have you on the show. Do you want to give yourself a little uh, little introduction to my chat uh, and to me? Honestly, I I'm vaguely familiar with you. I saw a bit of the segment that you had with uh, Vosh the other day, and I've seen some of your posts on Twitter. I've been uh, very very busy. Um, if you could introduce us, uh, <laughs> introduce yourself to us. That'd be great. No worries. Yeah. So my name is Econo Boy. It's my online persona, I suppose. Uh, right. Basically, I went to grad school, graduated about a year and a half ago, and decided that uh, I had a heck of a lot of free time, which was only compounded uh, when obviously graduating in the midst of COVID, not much to do. And so figured I'd start doing YouTube and uh, eventually I'll start probably streaming as well uh, a little bit. Uh, the content that I produce is economics focused for the most part. Uh, I'm a capitalist, I'm a social Democrat. I would say love the Nordic model pretty much as close as we can get to that as possible in America would be great. Um, and uh, a lot of the content I do is scripted and informational. So what is quantitative easing? Should we have a gold standard? What's inflation? How does inflation happen? Uh, you know, what does the Federal Reserve do? If you've had these kind of questions, my channel is probably a good resource. Uh, and if you like discussions and debates like these, uh, I do those a lot just because I personally kind of just like discussions and debates, uh, not necessarily for like, uh, you know, educational purposes, you could say, but some people might say that debates are sort of inherently educational in nature but yeah so that's that's well you know it depends you're right uh but uh but that's what i do so if you're interested in that you can uh you can find me on uh, the uh, econo boy youtube channel sick well uh welcome and uh thanks for introducing yourself so um so you you probably know a little bit about me i guess uh, it seems like you might have some sort of misconceptions about my positions or whatever because I, I noticed that you were you were pretty firm on like the socialist thing i i don't really identify super super strongly with the socialist um like label like strictly but i do think it's relatively useful for describing certain portions of my position um i'm a political edutainer uh, i've done a lot of debates in the past had a lot of conversations you've probably seen my face around uh kind of got a name in these in these uh these these parts so to say uh so yeah uh welcome welcome on and uh thanks for coming on so uh you said wait did you say you live you live here in america or or you live i'm an american so okay yeah okay cool so um all right sick that's that's good to know uh i'm also an, an american i guess um i, I live in america uh yeah uh, i don't go. identify strongly with my americanness but uh it is something that exists and and uh is nonetheless so all right uh yeah i guess let's start off uh what was your what was your first thing that you you said you wanted to talk about why am i a socialist right was the first thing you want to talk about yeah so i think uh so the, the the impetus for this conversation was that i saw during the debate with vosh you had sort of tweeted or sorry not tweeted obviously you'd you'd spoken in his chat yeah yeah um and the quote was like uh, relative, like quote, relatively small amount of abject slavery and exploitation, or something like that. Yeah, true. Um, like Pepe, Pepe face or something. And yeah, so was Pepe that was the impetus of the conversation. So this oh, okay. this conversation I was hoping Did would I be bother? about. I didn't mean to bother your feelings or anything. I just sometimes I like to watch streams and comment. You know, like <laughs> no, 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 it's like a, it doesn't chatter. hurt my feelings. No, no, it's it's it certainly doesn't hurt my feelings. It was more just like, oh, this 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 could be an interesting sort of supplemental conversation. Um, I remember seeing a, the, the only debate or like discussion I could find of you talking about socialism mm -hmm. was the dual debate that you did with uh, socialism done left that against Rob Norton in counterpoints. Yeah, it was like uh, six months ago. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all I could yeah, find. I mean, you probably talk about it a bit more. So I wanted to talk about socialism and, and, and broadly uh, you know, why you might lean towards uh, more that direction. So yeah, socialism. Uh, so, you know, so well, first why? off, you said, you said, did you disagree with yeah. what I said in the chat there? Do you think that, like, did you think that was, like, a offensive statement or something? 
like because because um, if that I'm was a little what, confused, what like, what, do I think that? Yeah, like, like, did you think what I said was was, was like like deeply wrong? Like saying that like, oh yeah, Pepe relatively relatively small amounts of of like slavery and abject poverty. Do you think that that's like a wrong sentiment or something? Um. So partially, I guess. So par part of my sort of debate with Vosh was the idea that unequal exchange does not represent a huge amount uh, of the economy. Um, and the prospect of reforming that portion of the economy isn't necessarily unsustainable. Uh, obviously, I don't like uh, any sort of slavery in the supply chain in a modern economy or, or unequal exchange. And so those are kind of the two answers to the question. But I mean, you, you do recognize that like the entire world economy is propped up by what is functionally slavery, like still to this day. And even if you think, even if we were to pretend that like most of the slave, abject slavery and unequal exchange, if you want to call it that instead, um, like it, which I think is kind of like a downplaying term. But um, if we were to talk about like those things, like even if we were to pretend that it was all gone now, that the system only got to where it was, where it is right now, specifically because of that massive, massive, massive exploitation that occurred, like globally, like do you... Like, I, I wonder because, like, I felt like you reacted very strongly to that. And, and then that was the first thing you brought up here. But I feel like that's a relatively uncontroversial statement historically that, like, um, most of the capitalist economies that we know of in the world were built directly out of colonialist economies. And many of them didn't really transfer away from that. Like, they may have um, on the surface, they may have made some tweaks here and there, some minor reforms. But a lot of these uh, a lot of these colonialized countries are still being exploited to this day. To varying degrees right so uh there, it's sort of two different issues so um on one hand is a significant portion of the global north's wealth historically derived from like very immoral practices like like you know ad ad adverse colonialism slavery Wait, do you uh, think imperialism there's like such a thing as advert like do you think there's like non-adverse colonialism um no, when when I say adverse colonialism, it's not to imply a dichotomy. It's it's more just to say that colonialism is is quite bad, right? Okay. And yeah. so, uh, sort of the answer to the question is, you know, is is not a small chunk of wealth uh, of the global north derived by those things? I would certainly say uh, yes, right? Now, there's probably been scholars that have tried to quantify, like, to what extent the American GDP is based on slavery and colonialism, to what extent is European wealth built on colonialism of you know, place like Africa and Southeast Asia and place like that. Um, I haven't read those to be fair. Um, sure. What I was more sort of concerned about in the debate with Vosh, and to be fair, it's going away from the original sort of flow of the debate, which is totally fine, but yeah. was we don't have to the scale at which, just, you know. yeah, the scale at which this unequal exchange exists as it were today, um, the trends of that unequal exchange, uh, what we could do to solve that unequal exchange. And what I would argue is, uh, that social democracy can and in fact is showing trends towards solving that unequal exchange and we can have a capitalist system without unequal exchange. I mean, I think that's kind of a um, an out, like that seems to me a bit of a, of a huge claim, a, a huge unsubstantiated claim um, and a claim that conveniently puts the interests of the, the colonist nations sort of first. It's saying that, ah, yes, if we like reform these colonizing nations slowly, well, we can reduce the amount. But the reality is that like, even if you got it to zero, that doesn't change the historical fact. Like for example, uh, just to use like a bit of a metaphor, if I like, if you were like just sitting there and minding your own business and, um, and I came in and, and like maybe you had like a rock tumbler or something like that and you were making nice little rocks that you could sell and I came in and and I uh, destroyed your rock tumbler or took your rock tumbler, took all the rocks that you were, um, you know, tumbling to, to make them polishy and, and sell them to make a living or whatever. And then I took them for myself. And then I said, okay, well, we're not going to take it anymore. Well, it's too late. We've already taken that thing. That resource has already been exploited to some degree. And you may not even have the resource necessary to rebuild that. Do you see how that might be like a permanent thing that that historical fact um, permanently changed the, the, the sort of 
equilibrium for the person who had their stuff stolen. Like, I don't think you can just say like, oh, well, it's going down now and then be like, yeah, but th and, th and that that's not convincing to me that like a system that got itself to this point by abject slavery. I mean, we can look at the most extreme examples or the least extreme examples. There's uh, everything from, you know, slavery in America to, um, you know, uh, the, the Republic or the, the to the um, uh, Belgian Belgian Congo. Um, you know, King Leopold and all this. Um, these are, there, there's just an endless amount of stories. It's, it's a, essentially an incontrovertible historical fact that colonialism was a disgustingly exploitative process. And that is a process that only recently has begun to even slow, let alone disappear. So do you see why I might be very, very skeptical of a claim that like a capitalist social democracy, which was only made possible because of this, this massive amount of exploitation is somehow going to wean itself off of that and then restore that which it already took and consumed? Well, sort of yes and no. I think that on, on one hand, you've said in the beginning of the debate, mm -hmm. the entire world economy is propped up on sort of slavery and exploitation mm -hmm. and i take yeah. that to mean that i i assume you mean more of a historical view on that no uh, and no. maybe you're not necessarily okay no, no. so you're I, you're, I mean, you're I, making I the claim both, both historical and present like an example of this and this was some um, actually like i don't again i don't want to relitigate your conversation with vosh but i think that my when i originally made that comment i was responding to a point um which you were making about like oh well only a certain percentage of uh of the American GDP can be traced back to like products that use like gross exploitation, which I think that is a, I would highly, highly doubt that sort of data. That sounds like the most easily fudgeable or manipulated data ever. You could just basically it all, that's a, that's a game of definitions. How do you define exploitative, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but even if that were true, even if it were true that only 8%, what are the core pieces of that? I mean, for example, one that I think of right now that is going on right now as we speak, I talked about this on my stream recently, is uh, is palm oil. Uh, the palm oil trade is disgusting. It is horrifying. It has been called out by basically every international environmentalist and human rights group on the planet. A cursory Google search can get you as much information as you want uh, about the palm oil industry. Um, and the palm oil doesn't really make up like a huge GDP percentage of our um, of our economy. However, palm oil is the primary ingredient used in basically every single uh, like sauce or or um, or uh, flavoring that you it, that you in, it consume on a daily basis. Americans consume all kinds of McDonald's. All of McDonald's sauces are made with palm oil. All of Burger King, every single fast food chain, almost every single restaurant chain in America uses palm oil as a key part of their uh, their branding, not just their brand, but their flavors, these things that sell their product. And there's, and, and so when I say that like the world economy is built upon this slavery, I mean, this is another thing. We can talk about cobalt. Cobalt itself is a, a uh, is a resource or, uh, yeah, I think it's cobalt is the one I'm thinking of. Lithium is another one. These are resources sure. that individually do not make up a huge portion of our GDP, but nonetheless are incredibly vital for making the rest of the production line possible and i think it's a bit of a um i think it's a, a bit of a unfair and dishonest um like move to, to to only look at like this this sort of constructed number of how much percentage of gdp is directly caused by slavery when we already know that core pieces of the economic function of our country which is a huge powerhouse for world economy uh is built off of uh, is only enabled because of slave labor. You know, Walmart, uh, McDonald's, all these companies cannot make the ridiculous yeah, so, profits be if without those things. No, I, so I, I think to, to a certain extent that's correct, but to a certain extent it's not. So okay. what I would say is that um, like pa palm oil is probably not the best example. It's probably okay. better to rely on cobalt and lithium for your case, just because sure. like the, the food industry obviously has a lot of substitutability. There have been examples where companies have gone from uh you know from saturated fats to trans fats back to saturated fats because of sort of a regulatory push or something okay. like that and so the, the the prospect of obviously getting rid of the palm oil trade might be a little bit more 
have relative ease compared to like lithium or cobalt. Now, um, when talking oh, I, about raw we, resource, we, yeah, when see, talking this, about raw resource, well, well, hold on one second, sure. because this is where we start to get some some big differences and where I start to see very differently, because it's all good and well to say it should be easy, but it isn't. We're still using palm oil and everybody knows about it. Like this is not an unknown thing. I mean, we could talk about this. Another example of a, this is of this specific thing of like, oh, it should be easy to swap it out. Well, shouldn't it be a little easier to start moving towards green? Well, we can't because that's not how we, there is no person like you, Econo Boy, aren't the one making those calls. These corporations, they have to either be made to or we have to find a way to get them to stop using palm oil. Otherwise, they won't. And it doesn't seem that simple because it doesn't seem like we're able well, to do anything about those sorts of things in most cases. Yeah, so exactly. This is something that in the debate I had with Vosh, I think got like pretty uncharitably bogged down in. So okay, I sure. think government regulation plays a pretty key role in terms of reforming our supply chains and trying to make them more sustainable, both in the green sense, but also in the human mm -hmm. sense. Sure. Uh, and so obviously government regulation plays a key role. Now, my point is rather just that the capitalist system as a foundation, sort of as a mode of organization, has advantages that a socialist system does not have in well, terms of flexibility system. and growth and capital markets and stuff like that. Well, wait and a wait, that I believe on that the socialist system, though, doesn't it? Well, I, I it think greatly not the necessarily. The I mean, well, Sorry, if a socialist system allows up. for. Yeah, I mean, it, it, certainly. So I guess the broader point is just and we can get into like that overall is that the broadest, most high level view is that the capitalist system provides for certain flexibilities and abilities to raise capital and invest that I think the socialist system uh, does not have, right? Okay. And I think that that flexibility is important. Uh, I think that what? the types of organizations of socialist economies can actually exist within capitalist economies. Talk about worker co-ops or social wealth funds or something like that. Um, okay. But the idea of getting rid of like the commodity form or uh, removing uh, profit motive altogether or the workers completely owning the means of production, I think that this is where you start to see a lot of problems. Problems that also perpetuate the types of incentives and market structures that you have criticized this entire time. So the issues of unequal exchange would exist in sort of a market socialist system as well as the system we have today. I'm not a market socialist. It's just socialist. that I think that... I'm not saying you are, but yeah. I'm saying that in general, these or even like a sort of a if, if every country was like ML or something like that. And right. you have to describe your exact system of socialism to be fair to have well, a super I mean, responsible I don't, I don't conversation. Have a single but... so, I don't have a single uh, uh, outline of socialism. That's not the way that I well, like I'm not I'm not like I think I, there's this tendency. That, that's of, somewhat of a problem, right? No, it isn't. You actually. Know, you... No, no way. I don't think it is at all. See, like I think that you and a lot of sock Dems and, and liberals and also MLs as well are in the business of trying to determine a basically a one world rule. You basically want to say, OK, this is the capital T system that works well for everybody. I don't believe that. I don't believe there is a single system that works perfectly for everybody. I don't think that's even like a knowable thing. I don't think you can know that information. I don't think you can calculate that. I don't think all of the data in the world would allow you to calculate a so-called ideal system for all people. What I believe in is that we, that like, I believe that we can talk about, uh, uh, ethical and and moral issues within these systems and we can propose alternatives we can propose al alternative ways of looking at it. i don't think you need to have a totalizing system that you would convert the world to in a minute in fact i don't want to do that i don't want the whole world to live by the demon mama rule what i want to is encourage people to look at social solutions to look at communist solutions because i think that communist solutions are fundamentally more just they are the right way of doing things you talk a lot about so far you've talked a lot about sort of the the pragmatics and the issues of a of a co-op based world i think a co-op based world would probably be better but i'm not trying to go out and make everybody turn into a co-op based economy that's not what i'm trying to do and i think this is somewhere where like sometimes lefties and like liberal capitalist types um like run into a wall which is that we're we're talking about like in some ways different things. You believe in coming up with a system that you can basically copy and paste over to every different system. And as long as everybody follows all these rules, then it'll be good or whatever. And I say, to what end? And then I say, I don't like that end. I don't think the end of like efficient, uh, if efficient economic growth and all this means anything to most of the people involved in it. I think that that is basically just 
mumbo jumbo. It is it is terminology that people come up with to you know sort of post hoc justify the perpetuation of a system that I don't that I think is fundamentally unjust. So I would disagree in part. I would say okay. that um, so to an extent, um, I'm not you know I'm not an imperialist. If if a com if a you know if, if a country is operating under a system that I don't necessarily jive with, that doesn't mean that I would believe in. Uh, instituting in, by force the systems that I would advocate for, right? And so, what I'm advocating is is more prescriptive, which is just that you know I think a social democratic system with you know relatively decent income in, uh, distribution, uh, a very broad and expansive social welfare state, and private investments and sort of private enterprise uh, combined mm -hmm. is like the best economic system. Now. I you think talk that's about... wishful thinking. And I think it's like not just wishful thinking. I think it's well, a sales. Yeah, hold, uh, hold on, hold on, so... hold on. Wait, 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 let me explain what I'm saying. I think what, <laughs> sure. what right? Like I don't want like I want to be able to go back and forth on these ideas, right? So like uh in this particular case, I think it's a sales pitch. You're giving a sales pitch for a social democracy and say, Well, I'm not an imperialist, but we already know that it that social democracies got to where they are thanks to imperialism and that they still uphold imperialism every single day that every single day that you have a social democracy that maintains uh firm borders and quotas on immigration that uh that regulate that regulates not just the existence of businesses within their land but also regulates what uh individual uh people can pursue with themselves i mean we're talking most social democracies have a whole lot of existing human rights issues going on in their own country because they determine they take it upon themselves to impose what is the right way to live. A great example of this is something that's very personal and at home to me is how countries like America, the UK, even some um, even some of the Nordic countries have restrictions against informed consent for trans people because they've determined this is the way that, these are the ways that you're allowed to live and this is what we're going to enforce. And we're you know, going obviously to enforce I'm that talking about economics, right? I'm not talking about well, but, social prescriptions. Wait, do you right think now, if, do you if, think that those are separate? I don't think those can be separated like that. Well, I mean, of course they can to a certain extent, right? So, really? for instance, we could compare... Well, yes, of course. So, like, for instance, I think that a country could be a social democracy but not allow gay marriage, and a country could also be a social democracy and allow for gay marriage. To me, social democracy, to a certain extent, does include individual liberty, and there's many different interpretations of that. But the reality is, is that, of course, there's many, many disparate sort of interpretations of what people should... Uh, act like socially. Now, I'm a, I'm a fairly far left person socially. I don't have any problem with sort of trans healthcare or gay marriage or gay rights or anything like that. But um, obviously using, when we're having an economics focused discussion about social democracy versus socialism, two modes of economic production, and you talk about, oh, well, in the UK and America, they're limiting the ability of trans people to uh, get the healthcare that they need. Like that's really not Wait, I sort think of that's a wait, that's an example. Though. That's an example of what I'm talking about. Also, like I don't mean to be like a pedant about this, but your your chosen I like ide ideological label is a social democracy. You're implicitly talking about a social system. Economies are social systems, and I could tell you right now, like off the top of my like right right off the cuff, exactly what the purpose of things like restrictions on gay marriage are. What uh, the economic purpose of allowing slavery of allowing segregation have been in the past those are economic and social forces because all economies are social forces so like it so feels... you you think you think in america when gay marriage was illegal that was an economically motivated decision for to some degree of course absolutely how oh but i mean look at how it acts so for example when not just gay marriage but if you look at um if you look at the history of queer rights in america gay people were marginalized and the reason for that was because there is a economic entang there is a economic entanglement with the values of the people who are at the top of that economy so economic structures grant grant the pathways to marginalization gay people were pushed out of jobs gay people were it was legally discriminated against gay people were discriminated against with regard to marriage which gives them interestingly one of the big parts of marriage is tax benefits it gives them the benefits to potentially build a family to live their life in a different well, way no, you're, you're, these, you're describing the, you're, no, no, these you're describing ways you're, you're you, describing ways yeah, I'm, I'm trying to explain. Okay. So you're, you're describing, ahead. and we might be misunderstanding each other. Maybe. You're describing ways in which gay marriage as an issue can be related to the economy. Sure, you talk about tax benefits from marriage, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, though, is that 
opposition to gay marriage was not at all a function of the capitalist mode of production and more so a focus of sort of evangelical conservative social beliefs that can indeed be explained by a social historical analysis, but I'm not sure can necessarily be explained by like uh, historical materialism or material condition of the time. Um, and I, I would also I ask as a follow up, you. do you, do you, well, hold on. Well, here's my sure, follow up sure, then. Sure. Are, are you like kind of a class reductionist? Do you feel like every sort of social issue can ultimately boil down to uh, class relations? No, um, not really. No, I'm actually very explicitly anti-class reductionist. However, excuse me, I am an intersectionalist. I recognize that class and, and identity are often inseparable. For example, uh, there's, no, there's no mistake that the lower classes in this, in this country, the working class is predominantly made up well, or I should say not predominantly made up. I should say that uh, people who happen to belong to racial minorities, people who happen to belong to um, se gender and sexual minorities largely uh, uh, inhabit the working class and what would have been previously called like, uh, I don't know, you could use the term lump and prole. There's a bit, been a million terms for this. I would say something like the precariat. I would talk about people who have been essentially squeezed out of of the uh the current societal uh avenues of production and of income and economy and so they go they go into the margins either through criminality where they nonetheless contribute to the economy via buying things just making it making money in a very precarious way uh sex work stuff like that these are these are remarkably common i mean and i i don't think you would contest that i don't think you i would hope not that you wouldn't contest that like you know, black people and and uh, and queer people are predominantly working class or arguably even have been pushed out of the working class into these sort of precarious positions of uh, taking freelance labor where they can get it um, or or doing sex work and stuff like that. You would you would acknowledge that, right? Well, I, yeah, sure. To an extent. I mean, obviously, we can quibble about scales or something like that. But sure. really, I, I think that the broader point is that when I advocate for a system and my advocacy for that system is underpinned in sort of economic outcome. And I okay. say, you know, you know, the parts of this system are great, you know, private enterprise, uh, redistributed policies, universal health care, um, you know, stuff like that. And the response is, well, what about how the UK and America, you know, got rid or, or tried to I limit trans affirming health care? I feel like you can understand very, how I don't feel like that's a very no, no, I'm, but well, hold on. Well, hold on. But that to, to be fair, though, when I when I made that statement, which was to say that I advocate for this system broadly as a mode of economic production, your response directly was to talk about trans healthcare in the UK and America. So I just, no, I'm not no, sure no, that no. that's my response was to, you know, you have out, to argue against the you know, hold on maybe economic outcomes. No, don't get, sure. don't get too far ahead. Cause um, what my response was actually not just to talk about trans people, but to use trans people as a specific example that I'm familiar with of what I'm talking about, which is the fact that when you say I advocate for social democracy and this is a social democracy that, in, according to yourself, is completely divorced from any social issues. It's just a supposedly just an economic issue, even though economies are ultimately social by their very nature. It, it seems to me like what well, we're getting, but that doesn't like mean we're that every at, social yeah, issue is economic. To be fair, but I right. I fail to see how any social issue can cannot be like economic in some way or another in this particular regard like for example um the uh like the fact that i the fact that it's difficult for me as a trans person to change my name legally means that it's much harder for me to get work that's just a fact i've experienced that firsthand i've experienced direct discrimination as a result of my name uh my name just dis dis unintentionally disclosing my trans status i lost a job because of that it was really fucked and um, like so these are directly economic when you when you exist in a capitalistic model a capitalistic a capitalistic model which essentially says that you know um, you know producing working laboring that these are core to our existence how can a social issue not be economic it always is economic so, any marginalization is going to marginalize certain people out of that out of that system right so again you're, you're talking about how social issues can affect your economic status to a certain extent, right? So if someone is marginalized socially, right? So they're sure. uh, gay or black or mm -hmm. trans or something like that, that can have sort of extrapolating effects in terms of their income, uh -huh. the jobs that are available to them, it things does. like that. Yeah. That's true, right? That, yeah, that's true to a certain extent, of course, right? But what I'm saying, is, when I say that social democracy is sort of as an economic system mm -hmm. divorced from the social side, 
what I'm advocating for is on the front end, not the back end. So mm. you can like we can both sit here and agree that marginalization is bad. We shouldn't marginalize gay or trans or mm -hmm. yeah, people of color or anything yeah. like that, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that my economic system causes marginalization, right? It doesn't mean that my economic system necessarily uh, you know, uh, bolsters marginalization mm -hmm. to any degree because we can both agree that those things are wrong and the types of income inequality reducing things that social democracy does, at least when it's implemented in its purest form, mm -hmm. actually reduce those things very, very effectively. And so well, that's why I'm saying that that's it's not thing. necessarily the, the, the best response. Sure, go ahead. I, I mean, I, I still disagree with you. I, I think that this idea that like you can wash your hands of currently existing issues that also currently exist in... Essentially, every. Well, I'm not single... washing my hands of them. To be but fair, they're, they're important issues are. to bring up. But no, you... not at all. Wait, I mean, but... gay marriage oh, okay. and healthcare well, are important issues. I, I get that. I'm not saying yeah, that you don't care about them. I'm saying that in your prescription for an economic worldview, you have to sort of set these things aside and pretend that they're independent, but they're not independent. And let me show you some exist some exa another example of this. Let's talk about. And this is a bit. This is a bit big. So, pardon me. It's not. So, when you, when you say they're not independent, I just have one clarifying question. Yeah, yeah, sure. When you say that they're not independent, mm -hmm. are you implying that the economic form of production in America or the UK mm -hmm. caused the tr the sort of trans people policies that they have today to come on the books? I think that I think that they greatly influence. I don't know if you can say. I don't think you can associate anything to a single cause, but I can absolutely say they absolutely believe that they they. Uh, that they influence it massively. And, and let me give you an example of this. Um, so everybody kind of knows the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the Margaret Thatcher quote, you know, there are no, there is no such thing as society. There are individuals and there are families, right? And we all know how both Reagan and, and, and Margaret Thatcher, uh, these sort of like iconic, like, like neoliberals, what I would call them, they are conservatives, but neoliberals are often conservative. Um, that's kind of what makes neoliberalism. But these sort of neoliberal figures pushed very hard for a very specific view of the family. Now, they personally may have had some sort of Christian or other ideological motivation, which I think is true all the time. I don't think you can build economy without some level of ideological motivation. I think that's basically impossible. Um, but th these these things were pushed forward. And, and uh, those normative families, those things that were pushed forward as government policy, that laws were made to encourage families to look a certain way, to behave a certain way, then impact the future uh, marginalization of all kinds of people. The the uh, the fixation on a one one man one woman nuclear family with kids, where all of the taxes are built around that kind of a structure, doesn't work if there's a gay person who wants to get married because that structure wasn't built for them. So they are inherently marginalized by the fact that the economy has been built around these specific things. Now, some of these you might be able to reform out, but others I don't think you can. And I certainly don't think, I think that like sort of wishing to set those all aside, these very, very interconnected, I, uh, you know, uh, social and economic issues, can't just be sort of set aside. I think that is like a type of magical thinking that that um, frustrates me with a lot of like, and and I think I think you're doing it to some degree here, though I'm not like impugning you in a major way. But I do think it's a bit of magical thinking. It's basically saying, oh yeah, if we could just flip a switch and change all of these laws that exist for a reason that existed as an, in, from an earlier form of capitalism that got us to this point, um, then it would be great. But in reality, it doesn't because those structures still exist those avenues for marginalization still exist and have been built in tr into the economy and you can't just snap those away they have ideological functions that that carry themselves out in the form of economy does that make sense well it, it does make sense but I, I don't think that the types of situation or the types of laws that you're describing today i'm not mm -hmm. sure that they're all entirely built on basically capitalism, like you said. Again, I, I mean, a lot of these laws are relics of the past that existed mm -hmm. even before capitalism mm -hmm. as a mode of production uh, even existed, right? And true? so, Like I'm gay not... marriage restrictions, like, like, uh, like anti-gay laws, like some of them did. Like, for example, I think in the UK, there was like anti-sodomy laws, but a lot, of the, a lot of these laws that we recognize now were indeed written uh, well after. Well, the, you I, know, I mean, I, I, don't think gay, I don't think gay people enjoyed like, a free and fair and open society in like medieval Europe, right? Well, I don't so, know. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's to probably, be completely honest, I don't. I, actually, gotten, I know almost nothing about 
um, you know, the queer history of, of medieval Europe, but there have certainly been societies in the past. Um, there have been certainly societies where gay people had a very different existence. I mean, we could talk about uh, Greece, for example. Gay people probably wow. didn't have a very good existence there, and there was certainly some weird uh, discriminations, but there's been many times in the past where gay people have been in a different position. Um, that said... Sure, well, different, the, pos different that, position, sure, but at, at the said, same time, I that, could... I, that said, in the, yeah. era of, of, in the era of capitalism, from mercantile all the way until now, there has been um, a very, very anti-gay slant to most of the major players. And it's interesting because, and I would say, this is because in order for their model to succeed, they need to be able to control the lives of individuals. And the way that they think it's most effective is to push passively at all times because of the structure, the way the economy is structured, how the money is made, how it works, is to pressure structures like the nuclear f family to p because that is a very stable model for making more capitalist workers for making for perpetuating more mcdonald's you know if everybody has a you know three kids and a white picket fence well then it's very easy for them to go to afford mcdonald's it, it, it's a perpetuating and these are ideological structures no, nothing says that that's actually the best way to do it but that's what people have determined or calculated or whatever and that's what happens we've seen this over and over again sure so i would i would take a i would take like quite a lot of issue with the idea that um well, you know, we can't say that, you know, gay people necessarily lived a worse life, just a different life in medieval Europe and, you know, ancient Greece, stuff I like that. I mean, I think Europe, it's... But... I, I mean, well, I'm sure, sure it was pretty I... bad in medieval Europe. I, I like, I, I I know a bit about medieval Europe. I've, you know, read quite a bit. Well, but sure, like... I mean, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get that. I'm just saying that I, I, I take issue with that because I, I think that that's um, a, a heck of an under... I think that's a heck of a deficit in analysis, the idea that the structures that oppressed gay people uh, today or through like the post-capitalist period were unique to that period within capitalism and partially oh. because of no, capitalism. No, 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 no. You, and you I think that the you oppression, well, if I can just, well, if I can finish please. those, sure, I sure. think that the the oppression of people across time is whilst we could, again, quibble and argue about Oh, this this system caused this oppression. This system alleviated this oppression, or whatever. Um, the oppression of people who look different and act differently across time is uh, somewhat agnostic to the uh, mode of production that system oh, from agrarian societies. I well, very but much from agrarian from 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 agrarian societies to uh, feudal societies to mercantilist economies to capitalist societies to like attempted socialist societies, there were heavy inequalities and discrimination of course, in of all of these societies. And so but I'm not that... saying that you're, 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 I feel like you're being a little obtuse on this one. Um, I'm not saying that there weren't any bad things in these previous economies that, that they took different shapes and we can trace those shapes. We can make the, sh we can understand those shapes by researching them. Um, and at the example that I used offhand about the nuclear family and also might I say, about gay marriage and and homosexual and queer liberation rights whatever you want to call it um that is very that is a traceable um a, a traceable lineage early capitalism was very entangled mercantile capitalism colonialism was very very influenced by the church and the church built a lot of these pieces as a part of that because they were a, a, an important part of the builder of the economy like this is just that's that's just that is that is the, the sure. So what's an what's that. an economic what what's an economic system that you think would alleviate these problems? What do you mean by an economic system? Like how broad are you talking? So you you mm -hmm. say what was the last thing you said? So no, like how broad are you talking here? Because like I don't know. I can talk. So I can talk about a lot of things that like could address individual. Well, you've issues you've now stuff. what I was going to say was that you you've now linked the idea of oppression mm -hmm. of sort of marginalized groups mm -hmm. and the economic system therein, right? Yes, yes and the economic let's, systems. Let, sure, well, sure, sure. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So, and let's let's just move past that. I disagree with it, but let's move past it. And rather, mm -hmm. let's say, okay, we've we've now sort of taken that as a given. That conversation's where it is. Okay. What is an economic system that does not do that, and why would it not do that, given your ideology? 
Yeah. Um, so here's an example. So um, if you want to talk about like, I mean, I think that's a, a massive, a massive question. I think that's a huge, huge, huge question. That's not given sure. like the space that is like saying like, what is a, an entire world stretching system that wouldn't do this? Um, I don't know if there is a single system that would alleviate all of these things. Um, but I would certainly like to see us alleviate it more than we currently do. And I would certainly like to see it more even than um, than social democracies. Um, would and, and I guess what I'm saying is I'm not I don't buy the pitch that social democracy really does that good of a job I think it's better in some ways um, like for example and I'll give credit to social democracy in this particular way a more robust welfare state does indeed reduce uh, like uh, people's reliance on churches or charities charities which are often run by churches which you know direct people back into their own religious viewpoints and whatever. Um, and I think that's a good thing, but I think that's not the only way to do that. For example, I think something that I advocate for all the time that as something we can do right now that doesn't require policy or anything, doesn't even require changing any governments, is a firm commitment to things like mutual aid, to people actually coming together, building structures like um, one that we have in this area is a huge open form um, uh like hundreds of thousands of dollars have been raised and moved through this. I've delivered for it um, grocery service that's totally decentralized. It's run entirely by a small group of people um, through a, a Google sheet based on the principles of mutual aid. There are people in need. There are people who can provide. How do we help each other? And if you need it in the future, you can come put your name on this list too. And a lot of people get fed that way. Those people no longer have to rely on potentially manipulative churches. They don't even have to rely on the government. They've got the food they need. That's the type of stuff that I like to think about. And so there's a lot of these. There's many examples. I think that the I don't think that like a single economic system is going to solve most of these problems. Again, because we have a slight difference in the way that we look at it. I think what you're looking to do is to basically say, okay, let's take the America, the big state construct, and if and then you go into sort of like a like a like a sandbox mode in your brain and you go, well, let's take these parts out and these parts out and that would be better. But that's not reality. That's not how things unfold. The there is there's electoral systems that stand in the way of that. There are, um, you know, there are corporate interests that stand strongly in the way of that, as we can see with the problem with making, you know, moving towards green energy and getting rid of um, all kinds of abusive labor practices that still go on to this day. Um, another example is potentially animal agriculture. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, do you see where, where that disconnect well, I, is? I, that, like, I think what you're well, asking I, I, for is something that I'm not looking to give or answer at all. I'm not looking well, to I give you a that system it's, by it's, which the entire world does this. I'm looking just well, to sure, find it's, out it's how it's obviously to more. It's it's obviously more convenient in a conversation about, you know, economic systems to not actually have a system you're willing to defend. That's fair enough, and I understand your point there. Well, you're trying to put, um, you know what, the thing is that's interesting is like you're trying to force me into your position because you're the one who's come well, here with a not pit. at all. Wait, wait, wait. But I, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like, like be aggressive to you personally, but I'm just trying to point out the shape of this argument. You came in and said, well, what are your views on things? And here's my views. And then you have an, uh, a prescription for the entire world that, that essentially you believe the whole world would be better if everybody was in a social dem democratic system. Well, that's great. But I don't really care about determining what system is the best for the entire world. I'm interested in finding better systems and where we can implement them and work towards a world that is better in general. And there might be different forms of that. Um, you know, uh, I'm like, I well, the, well, tend the world, to have a, you, you said, a, you, you said a lot and I, I, I'd like to jump in and, and try to respond to some please, of it. I mean, please, yeah. I, I think that, so the, the first thing that you said is that, so number one, obviously, I'm in favor of looking at the systems we have and mm -hmm. trying to improve them. That's why I sure. advocate for the systems that I do, right? Course, now, obviously, I would call that system social democracy or a social democratic society. That can have many different interpretations and implementations. But um, broadly, what you said in the first part of your, of your, uh, you know, of your, of your uh, statement was um, it's kind of an issue because if you look at take the American system as an example, mm -hmm. hey, these parts are bad, take these parts out, maybe replace them with these parts, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're better. Sure. Well, you said the problem with that is that it doesn't necessarily work out that way. And so my first response is that um, I think we can make fairly reasonable empirical arguments about what systems we can implement, the effects they would probably have, uh, and the effects that you know we could we can reasonably measure and expect them to have given certain experiments that are available to us. And so we can go through specific examples. But the next thing that you said was that there's systems that are in 
you know, your way in that regard, talking about corporate influence, the yeah, lack absolutely. of motivation for governments to do things, even mm -hmm. in a democratic framework. Yeah. And I really disagree with this generally really? that what you see across, well, if I can last sentence here sure, is sure, that sure, what sure, you please. see across time, what you see across time is in fact, governments facing more towards the people uh, in the form of social spending, um, government redistribution of the economy in form of good programs. Um, you don't really actually see many examples in the developed world uh, which, of course, I'm most familiar with, with uh, OECD data uh, of countries significantly scaling back their social spending projects uh, overall. We can look at certain examples of like, oh, th the healthcare reimbursement went down by 5% or, you know, this welfare program got cut down by 10% or something. But the broad trend over time is that the government has been providing more and more services to people and more and more income redistribution to people. And so I think mm. that the narrative of, Oh well, the systems you implement, you know, let's just say that they'd be good, you know, I, I which feel you like seem to take some issue with. Well, I hold take on, a lot of let's issues. just say they're good, even though you may take some issue with. Okay. Um, even if they're good, all of these sort of, you know, this cabal of people is going to stop it because they have all the power in society. Please, 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 it hasn't please, really please, necessarily please, been please, proven please. to be true over time. Please don't do that. That's like that's that's kind of that's kind of disrespectful. It's nothing about a cabal of people. I've never mentioned a cabal. Well, you, you said systems in place, the yeah, big wait, business wait, those interests, are different words, the donations. Yeah, those are huge. Like like this is this is why I feel like a lot of this conversation boils down to magical thinking. I feel like a lot of sock dems um, think of of government like something like Minecraft, where you can just sort of fly in and say the thing that you want well that's very good if you want to feel good about well, not your, at all wait, well, hold on, that's hold on, not hold on. what wait, i said wait, wait. You, you got to say a bunch let me say what i want to say yeah but you, you're you're well it's not what i said though but you're putting fair. but you're putting words on you're putting words on me like cabal and i feel like that's really like i feel like that's really unfair because that's not what i've done at all i've not even made even close to a, ge a, a gesture at a cabal i'm talking about very real well, you've gestured at big business that influences government and prevents good programs from getting started and true? i would point hold on real quick i would point to true? so i uh, so my response directly to the question is i would point to the data which shows that welfare spending social programs and government services broadly have only typically in aggregate been expanded and massively so mm. over time so mm. while it's true that Big business and sort of corporate donations on money do have some influence on outcome. Some? Broadly across time, they do not seem to have as much influence as people's views and people's votes yeah. uh, and, over and time. And I think this and is America, where we start to really like... We America do... is... Well, one more sentence. America is but one example in that regard. There's many other Biggest social one. democracies that do not have these problems with corporate influence on their politics or money in politics or anything like that. Uh, but even America is an example of a state that has increased social spending pretty dramatically over time. Okay. But, okay, so there's like a lot going on here. And this is where I start to feel a little bit like um, sure. we're, we're almost talking about different realities. Because, like, first of all, the idea that you can say, like, oh, there's some effect from corporations when, like, like we've known about the hard, objective realities about climate change since the 50s. Like we've, of course, we've refined these models greatly, but the people, the same people who discovered this shit in the 50s, um, like them and their associates are still advocating the exact same things and we haven't seen any change, despite that being a matter of absolute fact. And the reason for that is because... You, you not, think since the 50s, we've seen no changes in environmental wait, policy wait, or wait, renewable wait, policy? Wait, we have seen some, but we have not even seen close to enough. We have seen, we have seen very, very minor... Um, retreats and we have also seen the growth of a lot of these industries petroleum has expanded in all kinds of ways so what you're talking about is um what you're talking about is is a lot of things that kind of end up being a little bit meaningless like for example saying that like oh social spending has gone up but what does that actually mean is that actually helping people because um i mean donald trump did a whole lot of quote unquote social spending with his um with his ppp or whatever it was called a lot of which went to walmart and amazon so yeah, did the government increase their, their spending? Sure, but what was the effect? You can't just quote data like it, like like or statistics. This is called like this is what some people would call lying with statistics. And I don't mean that you're lying intentionally. I, I'm trying not to be like rude, but I just think this is something that happens a lot of times in these conversations. Is that like so? You can point to a piece of data that says, oh yeah, social spending is going up, but guess what? Like house values are going up. So is everything. It would. It only makes sense in a, in, in a world that is based off of perpetual growth that social spending, even in a country that doesn't fully embrace social spending, would go up. In addition, 
it, you, I noticed another thing that you said is like in the developed world, which is once again, that is a matter of definition, what you define as the developed world. And what about the non-developed world? There are a lot of people that exist in the non-developed world. And I don't think you can put these sort of like, oh yeah, well, we've never seen you know countries do this and that and the other thing. We have though. We've seen America deregulate from the 70s, from Reagan. I highly doubt you would disagree with this, that, that Reagan deregulated and that had negative effects. We have seen the undermining through legislation of union, of, of, of union ability to be able to negotiate for themselves. So it's not true. The claim that like, oh, well, social spending has gone up. Well, that's lying with statistic. That's saying, oh, well, this number got bigger, but we don't actually know if the impact has come out to be that way. And I can tell you from my personal experience, not just my literal lived life, but from the stuff that I cover, the things I talk about, um, this is not true. The idea that like social that like social welfare is in a better place than it ever has been is simply not true. We have 750 dead 750,000 dead Americans, and that's because our government didn't spend socially, quote unquote, effectively or to a great enough amount to combat the reality of the world. And that is true about climate change even further. We know how severe well, it I is. Well, think, I think, yeah, I think that I think there's a difference between our government hasn't spent or done enough and our government, in conjunction with big business and corporate interest, stops all progress or most progress that, from happening. I think I think that, that those are two, you know, very. Well, it seems that you've greatly implied that these this sort of progress is only marginal. Yes. I talk about the yes. idea that. Well, I don't think that the environmental regulations from 1950 to today are even, you know, 70 years of environmental regulation. Uh -huh. I don't think that that's mind you. marginal. Well, sure, I'm talking about a trend over time. I don't think that today we are in in even anywhere close to as environmentally degraded as we were in the 1950s. And I don't think that the transitions we've seen on the energy grid, for example, talk about renewable energy, um, is that. like marginal in in most you're, cases. You're wrong on um, the in facts. terms of the OECD, but, when I talk wrong about the social about expenditure, that. you're wrong on the facts about that. Like the, the so the, I'm I so I realize, would, so uh, I so great, really uh, really quick before oh, okay. well I, I haven't you've 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 you made several points, and the last okay. point that I guess sure. is worth responding sure. to here is the idea of lying through statistics. So social spending, what does that even mean, right? So. Uh -huh. I can read you a definition. Sure, According to the okay. OECD, social spending is uh, the provision by public and private institutions to the benefit and uh -huh. uh, financial contributions targeted at households and individuals in order to provide support during circumstances which adversely affect their welfare, okay. right? And so sure. social spending, I feel like, is a fairly targeted definition, the idea of spending towards people who are in circumstances that adversely affect their welfare. We're talking about welfare mm. spending here, so I don't okay. think. I mean, that I don't think that really, that wasn't very to... convincing to me. Like, I don't feel like that so definition I, made me. Well, if you're not un... convinced by the OECD's definition of social expenditure, uh, you know, I'm sure I, that I'm I not just... going to convince you. But that's maybe, that's maybe how you they won't. But it. I mean, isn't that kind of doesn't that kind of speak to like doesn't that kind of speak to what I'm talking about? That like, yes, you can you can def define all these kinds of things, but. The reality is that like that social spending has to actually reflect into something else. It's all it's all good one thing to to say that a data a piece of data exists and and another thing entirely to decide whether or not that piece of data is relevant. Like sure, maybe every government in the world has increased its social spending, but is that working? Is it relieving the pain that we supposedly we don't know that. We don't know that. I mean, for example, well, I mean, like uh, wait, I can think of one think wait, wait, hold on, I can think of one one potential example of this. One sure. thing that has been rolled back significantly in the United States is like public arts spending. Now, while maybe public arts isn't really like considered to be welfare, maybe that isn't considered to be a welfare thing, but at one point in time in the United States, it was possible to start a career as an artist and become sustainable via a, a very, very uh, robust process of government grants of, of public uh, spaces that could be used to hone art skills, something that we value greatly as a society. And that's not easy to turn into a, a piece of a, an OP, OP, I'm sorry, I forget the acronym, an, uh, an OCED um, data point because it isn't, it, isn't, it isn't convenient and quippy data. The data has to be relevant. I don't know that social spending is, uh, is even a good metric to measure any of this by because we don't know where that spending goes exactly and we don't know how it actually reaches people. There's another thing too, which is the way in which these um, these social spending pro uh, processes are uh, are means tested. Here's an example. So in California, there's a lot of spending on welfare in California, 
But getting welfare in California is notoriously difficult. And you want to know the reason why there's more spending? It, because they have to increase the bureaucracy in order to process the means testing. So it isn't actually that there's uh, all that much more actually getting out to individuals. In fact, there's probably been a reduction. That's the reason why there's been so much, you know, this budget shifting around. But there's a whole bunch of money. All that spending is going towards giving jobs to bureaucrats. Like, I, I think that uh, I think this is a very shallow way of justifying um, ultimately what is a sales pitch for a worldview, which I don't I don't buy the sales pitch. I don't think that that uh, that just because this this particular organization says that uh, social wear, welfare spending has gone up, that that actually means that things are better for people. It's just a, it's so, a, a contextless piece of data that might be useful for some so for I, some particular I, things. But Well, I don't think well, Dima, I, I think obviously I've got to take issue with the idea that. Broadly, um, we don't see the material effects of these policies over time. I mean, you know, uh, income inequality, um, well, income inequality in, in certain countries, of course, in other countries has gotten a lot worse. But it's real um, bad in America. Right in now. some countries. It's the worst. That, sorry? It's, it's real bad in America right now. America's like. No, I know. I know that. We both and... Well, you seem eager to talk. Well, hold on really quick. You, you seem a bit eager to talk about America and the failings of the American of welfare course, system. You know, we would have. Well, of course you are because you you feel it might be a you know a great point. No, and no, to be no, fair, no. it's I not a bad America, point. I live in America, my which, friend. I live in America. It's not well, because I, it's... I understand, but also I'm not necessarily bound to the country that I live in okay, in terms of the sure. system I advocate for. Of course, yeah, you understand that, right? Of course, so, yeah. I've like never said when that. it comes to America, I'm not bound to the American system, and right. I would agree probably line for line with some of the failings of the American system. Oh, yeah. Um, it, you know, so that's one thing. But the systems that I advocate for which, you know, basically the Nordic model, like I described before, don't necessarily have these same pitfalls. And if you want to argue for, oh, we should have an even more generous welfare state or we should have less mm -hmm. means testing or something like that, that's reasonable. But my point would be that that all fits, that conversation entirely fits within a social democratic framework. And I do think that it's unfortunate that you seem unwilling to defend even generically a system. You talk about mutual aid, for instance, right? Yeah, yeah. Mutual aid, again, perfectly fits within a social democratic framework. Um, mm. As a as a as a mode and means of of, of economic uh, stretch, production, but, it's, yeah, like it's whole, not at all a stress. I mean, mutual stretch. aid, mutual aid, the mutual like, aid you just described yeah, yeah. happened presumably in America, right? right? It, I mean, so of course it does, but but it but it, but it happens in spite of. It's not encouraged by or helped by uh, by a, a democracy or a social democracy. It is an organic meeting of needs by individuals who are assessing those needs. Like, do you right, see and a saying? system that allows well, a, but, syst a system that allows for people to independently organize but would be a good that, system, right? Be, well, I mean, but that like, what what are you talking about? A system that doesn't like what what type of system do we have that doesn't allow people to help the people that they want to help? And I mean, I would well, say that, that that's in, my in, that's my entire point is that the the structures it seems that your the structures you advocate for would actually perfectly reasonably fall within the system that I advocate for. But because you're not willing to make any broader systemic prescriptions, it's what completely what, impossible all kinds of to actually systemic prescriptions that I'm willing to make. I just don't think there's like you, you what you're what you're asking. I don't know what it feels like. What you're asking me for is to present you with like a badge of a type of like a like an archetype of a of a system that I want. But I don't really believe there's a single archetype. I think there's many approaches to this. For example, something that I'm for example something that's a that's a systemic. Um, critique that I think would be like genuinely like a, a, a wonderful thing would be a drastic, drastic disassembling of our prison state, a thing that is not going to happen even in a social democracy. But I believe that our 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 prison industrial complex, if you want to borrow that word, is a disgusting blight on humanity, especially in the United States, but also in other countries. And I don't I don't think there's any justification for the number of people that we imprison. Even like, especially because most of them are done for crimes that do not have any right. Which is why I would harm. defend a Nordic style prison system that doesn't have that problem. But right? the prison I mean, you, system you can, in and of itself is can... still a problem. I but but do you recognize where what you want me to do is you want me to agree with your pitch? But I think there are many <laughs> systems. Well, wait wait. I think there are many systems that can deal with the issue of prisons that aren't necessarily a social democracy. And I think a social democracy necessitates maintaining systems in in place that I think are unjust. Just. A social de democratic right, so program involves maintaining immigration control, maintaining prisons, maintaining um, all kinds of systems that are we've already shown are deeply, deeply flawed. Those have to be maintained okay, so by a social democ we're, we're democratic getting, system. 
we're getting a bit closer to, to perhaps the point of this conversation. So, you know, sure. no prisons, no immigration controls, social democracy might allow for those things. Sure. Um, the reason that, you know, you're saying like, I'm trying to sort of get you to agree with my argument. That's not at all. I'm just trying to get you to define a system. For instance, when I proposed, when I proposed this conversation sure. with you, uh -huh. I laid out specifically to me, the converse, I suggested this format. Okay. Why are you a socialist? Mm -hmm. What system would you advocate for? And then how does this system compare to my system? And then you agree to that format. But then well, once we've I mean, started the conversation, you've said, well, hold on, hold on. Just let me finish here. Is that you've said, I'm not necessarily a socialist. I also don't necessarily advocate for a ubiquitous system. Yes. And I'm not willing, obviously, because of those two things, to compare that system to yours. Do you see how this, you know, well, I mean, the, that was the what, framing of this debate what, has been totally I mean, flipped? Flipped on its head. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of like your problem, though, not mine. Um, and with all due respect, well, you, like, you agree. Wait, hold on, to hold on a second. The are, framing are you, of the so, debate. So wait, has your has your position come to you're mad that I didn't follow your very very basic outline that you vaguely pitched? No, no, not at all. It's that okay. what, what, so then let's, what you're let's, saying. So then is, let's not. Let's what, wait. What you're, well, if I you, well, you gotta let, let me, me respond. Hold on. You gotta let me respond to the thing that you said because you made a, a pretty big claim against me there about what I'm trying to do with the conversation. Well, it's not a claim though. To be fair, we we did agree to this format, and it's fine that we're deviating from. It. The, the only issue that I had was that you seemed to say that I'm like trying to get you to do this. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm trying to is because that's just the original, you know, it, it seemed like when you said yes, when I said one of the questions I'm interested in is what socialism you advocate for, that would imply that you're willing to define a type of socialism that you'd advocate no, 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 for. No. Okay. Well, then I guess we can call that, we can chalk that up to a miscommunication because my my Maybe. understanding was that you wanted to ask me these questions and have my genuine response my genuine response is like labels are something that i don't like put a whole lot of stock into um do i think there are like a so like va various socialist focused systems are good sure and i think that a socialist model is significantly better than ours obviously it, um like i advocate more for a communistic model i believe much 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 more in a system that focuses on genuine genuine communes people coming together and meeting their needs together and organizing with other groups of people who are meeting their needs and doing so in a way that maximizes you know the liberty of those people and the groups of people that they associate with that is like my my the way of boiling down what my vision of, of a perfect utopia would be right um okay so and, you you would advocate for like a classless stateless moneyless society absolutely. just a communist society oh, it'd be wonderful that okay would be, so i well, think, there, I think well, we there would we live go. our we... lives much better of course but i but the reality okay, though, well, is that we've... like yeah so then then if we want to move from that to the next question which i can bring up here i guess if you want to which is what socialism would you advocate for well there's many types of socialism i would advocate for i don't think there's a single type i think there's many different ways to approach or to successfully uh put put in like socialist structures um and but unfortunately i think that there's fundamental disagreements that we have which is that in your case you you believe very much in capitalism you believe very much in this sort of uh idea of, of of private ownership and that is a that is a big difference between our positions like i i don't believe that that private ownership is a is a valid model i think it's an invalid model i think it ignores human need i think that it doesn't serve us well i think of course um like like not to just anybody who's going to do the toothbrush meme that's not what private property means that's personal property personal property is like i have this lighter or I have this gift that somebody gave me that's a little ashtray that has pompo on it. That's personal property. Very different thing. Sure. Private property is is owning the the uh, the means of production for the ends of profit, which I don't believe in. I don't think that that's a good way to build the world. I don't think that we should allow people to uh, sit on enormous amounts of, of resources that they can designate uh, and use to dominate others. I think that we should aim to share the resources that we all have on this planet, share our knowledge, and work together to survive and to make life better for all of us, if possible. Um, so yeah, I think there are many types of socialism that, that people advocate for. Um, I don't tend to be particularly, uh, favorable towards like the mar market socialist solutions because to me, um, a market socialist solution always, always seems like, um, like it doesn't actually have anywhere that it goes. It's sort of just like, okay, we're going to advocate for co-ops, but then co-ops are ultimately still upholding a system of production that involves, uh, a, a a distinct independent construct controlling private property um, right market yeah, distribution sure yeah. yeah and and like so i don't really find those particularly convincing i think that there are um 
you know, things that I tend to find particularly interesting are eco-focused uh, socialistic projects. Uh, I tend to find um, autonomous uh, socialist projects very, very interesting. Um, and I, um, I find interesting, though, an incredible amount of critiques with uh, the sort of revolutionary socialist projects um, of, you know, of the, of the, of the, the, the uh, you know, 1800s to 1900s. I find them very interesting, but I have an incredible amount of, of critiques for these processes and I actually spend quite a lot of time debating with like the ML types uh, I don't think MLs offer a meaningful or or uh, worthwhile path to a better world I think that they offer some Certainly. yeah immediate solutions but but yeah so um, and with regard to how it compares to your system well um, like the easiest way to put that is that we have different views of what should be done with the world I think that we should uh, we should take actions at every point um, regardless of what flavor they take whether they're electoral if that's even possible I have a lot of critiques of electoralism um, but whether electoral or non electoral to uh, to essentially liberate communities allow people to form communities in public that aren't based off of ownership or economic exploitation that we should push for these and there's many paths to do so i think one way to do so is i mean an example that some people might think is cringe but that i think is perfectly valid um whether you think it's cringe or not is the formation of independent communes if if people can form a commune say uh even one that's um you know, not immediately in direct opposition to any sort of state, say that you come across a parcel of land. Maybe it's public land, maybe it's not public land. We're, we're, all that details is kind of unimportant. But putting together a commune where things are shared and uh, and needs are met, I think that's a perfectly legitimate model towards uh, striving to these things. Um, now, if you want to talk about how we get, like, what I would hope for in the long term, I would hope to see that these types of projects will inspire others to um, to pursue similar types of liberation, that we will see the result of these projects and people being um, happier, people being better, more healthy, um, people being more fulfilled with their lives, being able to innovate more, being able to make create more art, things that are important. And I would like to see us encourage these around the world. And I think that sometimes that is going to put uh, groups in conflict with others. And how what, what that happens when there's a conflict that comes up, well, there's a lot of context that goes involved, that, that, that involves itself with that. Um, I think that the outcome of a remote, like rural agrarian commune um, that people just find that way of life good and enjoyable to themselves and they're able to take care of themselves and live long, happy lives is, is great. Um, uh, but it's going to have different, um, it's going to have different outcomes than say a group of people who, uh, neighbor a fascistic state, um, or who neighbor an imperialist state or who might be currently being opposed, like oppressed by, um, a, uh, by a, by an imperialistic state. I think those struggles are going to look different. And I think there's probably, you know, uh, quite a reasonable amount of different solutions that people would have to that. But I think what, like, that's where this difference is, is that I think you're looking to propose a totalizing system of government that, that can be sort of, you know, structured in, in a specific way um, and has these set rules that grows out of capitalism when I'm saying that's not it. What I'm saying is that, like, our current system is incredibly incredibly uh um, oppressive it le leaves people to lead very unhappy lives i don't buy the promises of capitalism i really haven't basically ever um and uh, i think from there we need to look at what we can actually do to let ourselves live the way that we want to live live the way that is that is good for us does that make sense no it does make sense and okay. that's again that's kind of part of the advocacy of my system is that mm -hmm. Ultimately, that people should have as much positive freedom as they want. They should be able to do as they please, um, sort of in and of their own actions. Uh, and that's what I'm advocating for. I think social democracy is the best system to accomplish that, right? Okay. So uh, you talk about how you know markets can be toxic, so can profit motives. Um, to a certain extent, this is true. This is why most social democratic, well, pretty much every democratic social democratic system mm -hmm. uh, does have select decommodification depending on the failure of the market, depending on the structure of the market. Um, and of course, they also redistribute a lot of income and profit uh, into welfare programs that are very, uh, you know, very good and robust mm -hmm. in sure. nature. Um, and also the type of system that you advocate for personally, you know, type of a, a commune type system where, uh, you know, I, I guess sort of a, you know, like you said, a classless moneyless sort of not commodified at all society, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I guess 
in theory, you could always do that if you wanted, but I guess broadly, most people don't seem to have the desire to do that. Um, oh, but in see, a social democratic system, in theory, in theory, you'd have, well, I think, well, any ultimately people could go into the woods and form a commune if they want to. It's sure. just that it, it seems like people would rather live in a, you know, sort of regular society. My point is just that a social democratic system seems to allow for the types of programs and growth and ability to redistribute, give people as much positive freedom as they want mm. um, to such an extent that it's able to do so. Uh, and thusly that system would be able to provide for the most amount of happiness for people and the most amount of freedom, whether that be starting a business or whether that be, you know, simply working the type of job that you want to do, getting the education you'd want, um, things like that. But that's not, but that's not, that's not true though. And this is where the, this is where the sa the sales. Well, pitch, what isn't I think, true fails. that what I said? Well, because like okay, you say that you believe a, that that your social democratic society is going to uh, yield like the maximum per, per, you know personal freedom, but you don't have the personal freedom to not work. You don't have the personal freedom, um, you know, to say uh, I don't really think that this the way that the public education is going is teaching me what I need to do. You don't really have that freedom. You actually don't. Well, you have to participate. In a communist style system, you'd have to work as well, right? Well, I don't know. No, ideally, no. There would be no forced labor. That is the goal. I mean, so how if, how, if you go, how well, would you under your system? How would you not have to work? Well, I mean, it depends on how broad, you're, like the, how broad you're, you're speaking, right? Like, so for example, um, uh, like if I was to go in, and join an agrarian commune or whatever, a remote agrarian commune, there's probably going to be some basic sure. needs that need meeting. And I think that those people would have natural motivation to, to do those things. But there's no necessary need for a coercive state to step in involved. Um, there's a saying by a really, really famous... Um, uh, anarchist um, named Malatesta, Erico Malatesta. You may have heard of him. Um, very, very famous guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he spoke about how uh, his system, the anar his anarchist program, which I don't agree with entirely, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, nonetheless, advocates for no uh, no hierarchical systems outside of the hierarchies of nature. Okay, we can't really do anything about the fact that we're hungry. We have to face the fact that, yeah, we're probably going to have to pick up food with our hand and stuff like that, but that we shouldn't try to build societies that force people to do certain things. Um, because in reality, we don't really need to do that. It is often out of our desire to control others um, that we end up, uh, you know, in a position of, of building hierarchies that force people into doing things. And social democracy, capitalism, is very much a part of this. You work or you die. Now, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt well, in, in right a now. In commune, well, one second. you I don't work mean to, or you die, right? It, one second. Um, with, uh, one second, I just got to welcome in this raid because I just got a big raid. So I'll, I'll just... Uh, <laughs> no worries. Yeah, you don't got to listen. I got to welcome in the raid. Welcome to everyone from Hannah Reloaded. Right now, we are talking with our guest, uh, a social democrat by the name of Econo Boy. We are talking about uh, social democracy. Um, we are talking about socialism. We're talking about communism. We're talking about different models for the world. It's been a very interesting and peaceful conversation so far. Please come in and get comfortable. Hannah, thank you very, very much for the raid. If you're here and you've never watched my show before, I have a website called demonmama.com forward slash live. You can pop on over, sign in with Twitch. It's super, super easy. And you can get all of our awesome emotes, some of which you can see on the screen right now. Um, so... Yeah, feel free to come over. You can also hang out in the Twitch chat. I try to keep an eye on the Twitch chat, though we're in the middle of a conversation, so I don't Hello? tend to read that much. Yeah, can you still hear me? Hello? Test? Oh. Hello? Hey, I'm here. Okay, my internet must ah, yeah, have sorry cut about out that. for a second. Yeah, I was showing my um, my uh, my microphone there. Uh, so anyway, welcome to the Hannah Raiders, and thank you very much. You can hear me now, right, Econo Boy? Yep, we're good. Okay, excellent. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I guess uh, my, my well, point was well, that in a commune, okay. you, you do have to work or you starve to death, right? Well, I mean, I mean, it depends, right? Like, I mean, if we're talking about it, like a commune you make today and go out into the woods right now and go and build a commune, um, not necessarily even, um, like somebody is going to have to gather food. Obviously we don't have any choice about that. That's nature. We don't have a choice that's determined by some people believe it's God that determines that some people deserve to, you know, believe that it's the mathematics of the universe that requires us right. to eat. But I don't think we should build structures that force humans to do things that are not genuinely needed. Like, and the reality is humans do engage in all kinds of unneeded things all the time because it's interesting to us. It's part of our nature. This is, this goes back to so, sort of the 
um, propositions of, of how much socializing and mutual aid is a part of our biology. And I believe that it is. I think there's plenty of evidence that shows that like we are social creatures. We are, by our definition, social creatures. It's almost impossible for us to escape that particular paradigm. So I think humans are naturally well, I, cooperative in that yeah. way. And as a result, no, human, humans are cooperative. I mean, we, that's how part of how we evolved was our ability to work together. That's true. But I don't, I don't think that there's a great, how do I put this? Um, it, you say one of the, one of the things that makes social democracy bad is the fact that you have to do things or basically you starve to death. Like you have to work or you can't have the money that you need to eat. And I didn't say that was something that, that makes like bad per se i did say that that's something that it doesn't deliver on the promise that you say about like liberating people i don't think people are particularly liberated in social no, no maximizing positive freedom now to a certain extent the like limiting factor of that is you will probably at some point have to work or make money in order to live now there's exceptions obviously if you're retired if you're a disabled individual you know you're you're going to have uh, the state probably take care of you for the you know the vast majority of your life, probably your entire life. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. Obviously, there's exceptions, but talking about like just a regular sort of healthy person who just doesn't want to work, sure. this person faces problems in both of our societies. It seems. No, I don't think so. I mean, maybe if if we're talking about a commune that exists literally on the brink of starvation, that's true. But the reality is that that communes that have existed in the past historically have not uh, have not put bars on things like food and resources behind work. Um, there have been many, many, and of course these are smaller societies. We haven't seen like a huge society. Just, I don't know. Maybe it is difficult. Maybe it would be difficult to organize a America-sized uh, country, but maybe we don't need America-sized countries. Maybe we can do really fucking cool stuff, better stuff even, without these giant nation-state apparatuses that sort of crunch everyone under a specific flag and make them go to war and get involved in these huge things. Maybe if we have smaller structures that are more capable of, of determining their own rules and their own ways of doing things, that we can actually make more progress. Um, I tend to think that that's true. I don't know that that's universally true, but I do tend to think that's th that's true. And in a, in a society that has uh, that is able to create an abundance, I don't see why there's any reason why somebody would have to be locked behind work. I'm sure that that community would probably value that person quite a lot. Now, there might be interpersonal conflicts, but that's a totally different conversation. An interpersonal conflict about who's doing too many chores or whatever is completely different than, this, than the state um, you know, de facto supporting the fact that you have to work in our economy or else you're going to die. Now, um, and, and by the way, there is another operating major thing here, which is that all of these societies have an abundance. Despite having a, a, a gross abundance, our America has more than enough to feed the whole world. We, we have such a great abundance, and yet we still force people to work. And, uh, and I don't think that would be a problem in an abundant communist society where things are shared. I don't think that would be a problem at all. If somebody decided for their own well, reasons, I, I mean, I think people have good reasons for not wanting to work. Like, here's an example. Well, that abundance exists on the back of many millions of people's work, right? Mm, and so, yes, you know, it like, does. Like, and those again, people who've been exploited, right? Because we know that like Jeff Bezos or, or even, I mean, you could pick a, a, a Nordic model CEO who's got millions and millions of dollars. These people have an incredible hordes of wealth. Hard to name one. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, sure. There's, I mean, I don't know them because well, I don't most live in people culture. don't know the Nordic CEOs. Of course, it's hard. It's yeah, hard to. I don't hard to name one. I, I get your. I'm sure issue. the IKEA guy is probably doing pretty well for himself. Um, so, yeah, like, I'd imagine so. Yeah. So, like, but like, the reality is that these people have such an such an unbelievable abundance, and yeah, it was it, it was created by hardworking people, hardworking people who deserve to be able to have a say in it and yet they don't not even close so this is the problem i have with the, the social democracies i think that when you pitch something like saying oh it maximizes personal freedom well that's what everybody thinks maoists think that, that their system maximizes personal freedom everybody thinks that their system maximizes personal freedom but does it and i when i put social well, I'm not, social I'm not, democracy I'm not sure success, i don't think agree with them well sure I'm, I'm not sure i agree with the you know, the, Mao had a very collectivist mindset. I'm not sure if you asked him, you know, do you do you believe in maximizing individual freedom? He would say yes to that question. And I'm honestly not sure, but it just sounds like it would be counterintuitive. But um, in, in terms of, you know, Nordic countries and, you know, how workers don't have a say, I mean, again, in a social democratic framework, 
workers do have like a lot of bargaining power and say uh, in their workplace, democratic structures in their workplace, right? So for instance, um, you're talking about in, in these Nordic countries between 50% and 90% unionization rates. Yeah. We're talking about worker board membership where That's they great. have sort of a capacity to make decisions as, as equal members on the boards uh, of directors. Now, yeah. to be fair, it's, it's not like majority membership. Sometimes it's a third, sometimes it's 50%, um, but they almost all have sort of ubiquitous union representation. They can fall back on a welfare state if they don't like their position and they can get supported in that way. Um, they also have free and universal education that they can fall back on and training. Sure. Um, they have a very technical training mm -hmm. uh, system. So, I mean, I, I think yeah. that the idea that, you know, the, these workers that build this wealth have no say and they get nothing out of the system is... Uh, it's not true, you know. I think. Well, I mean, the but thing I didn't that say that. The thing though, that a worker I? gets. I didn't say that. I never well, you, said that. You did. Ex you did explicit what you said in the beginning of the debate, and I think you sort of echoed that sentiment just recently, which is that, um, oh, the workers who build the wealth of this economy don't see anything from it, right? No, and I said I, they don't you know, see their just. I don't see. They don't see a just a just amount. They systemically, by the default, by the very default, even the most favorable social democratic system still operates on what I believe to be a very exploitative model. Like that's the problem, right? So I, like, I would, and and I know I would, you, you I would fundamentally disagree. With disagree. That. I mean, yes, well, of course, because you're because you're a, co a capitalist, and I'm not. That is a fundamental sort so of well, 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 core when, when a person chooses to work, when a person chooses to apply to a company and work for a company, uh -huh. what do you think they get out of that transaction? Well, I mean, it really depends, right? It depends on the individual. Most people, I mean. I would say the average person gets a wage that they do so that they don't become homeless. I don't think that most people set out to get a job at Best Buy or McDonald's or anything like that out of a genuine passion for that thing, you know? Well, no, like, really don't. certainly with like, these types, well, certainly with these types of positions, that's true, but in a system where you've got sort of, of free and... But that's a lot of the world. Well, a lot of the world is just shops and things like that. And like we've sort no, of I understand, been... but I'm not I'm not advocating for the systems of a lot of the world. I'm I'm really advocating for a very specific system, and it's the okay. system that I think is difficult to attack, just because I think it's broadly a very good system, right? So okay. when we talk about these types of workers, right, they have access to the universal education and training that can help them move up the income ladder. Mm -hmm. These the types of countries ladder. have very very high income mobility and ability to move up. What I was going to say, the point that I would make is that. When a, someone takes a job at, uh, you know, an, an, at a firm, right, mm -hmm. just a regular sort of conventionally managed firm sure. in a Nordic country, mm -hmm. what they're trading is labor for a risk-free paycheck relative to what they would get if they were to start their own business and sort of own their own means. Yeah, this is Coconut production. Island. This is the Coconut That's Island thing. They have the coconuts, and you got to suck the dick. You you get the coconut for sucking the dick. This is Coconut Island. This is the basics of the Coconut well, Island. No, meeting. not at all. This, oh, it this, absolutely this, is. That's not at all. No, it's not. So of course it is. This isn't Coconut saying, Island. Wait a second. Where, no, it's not. So hold on. Let me well, explain. I can, I can explain how. The, okay, fine. Go ahead. Well, you've explained. I, I just want to explain how it's not analogous, right? So, okay. um, it, this isn't like the guy has all the coconuts and you have to suck his dick to get the coconuts. There's, it's like there's a guy in the corner saying he wants you to suck his dick for coconuts, mm -hmm. and you can say, in fact, no, I don't want to do that. There's a hundred other places where I can work, and there's also a vast welfare state that I can fall back on, and I can also have a say democratically in the place Ideally. that I work. I do not Ideally. want to suck that guy's dick for coconuts. But then there might be some people who say, you know what? I really fucking like coconuts. I'm going to go ahead and suck that guy's dick for coconuts. Sure, but right? you do no, realize that that's like, exactly, that's like, this is a pipe dream. You're doing the magical thinking thing again. It's, this is it's, all impure. It's not idea. a pipe dream. Wait, the, it, is a, it is a pipe dream. No, no. If the, you go right the data, now. Wait, wait, the, wait, the, the data, data bores this out, right? No, the that's simply not mobility, true. The, wait, income mobility doesn't you, say. So, wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. You got to let me talk here. So income mobility doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about at all. Like not even a little bit. How well, many it, coconuts? It does, though, your ability no, no, to it doesn't. move up the income ladder no, no, or move down it. No, it doesn't because that's all relative. Income mobility might go up, but the cost of living might go up. This is this is it's it's it's, an, you're, it's a it's a non an unconnected cost issue. Cost of living might go up. What, yeah. what are you talking about? What, so what what happens if your income mobility goes up? You make more money, but things also cost more, which is something that's happening all well, over no, the world in, right now. In, income, that doesn't really income, mean income so, mobility. Wait, wait, you have to let me finish. Income what I'm mobility to explain. isn't like. Well, because you're misunderstanding what income mobility is. Income mobility isn't like lower income people making more money. It's the ability of anyone in any segment of income to move to any other of those segments, right? So the idea that rich people can become poor or poor people can become rich. Now, obviously, inflation's a problem if it gets out of hand, but it's great that under a social democratic system, you can control inflation but very robustly and not face the these only, problems. Like, as well. this, is, this is where, like, 
this is where I feel like we're getting off. And again, I fr I get frustrated with the magical thinking stuff because the reality is inclement mobility. It's, it's not wait, magical. This is a stop, system that exists stop. You have today. To let me talk. I know you're frustrated about it, but I, we got it. We got to like, we got to let me respond. Well, I'm to not this. frustrated to be fair. Okay. So the income mobility of somebody, somebody's ability to make more money or whatever is not, is not connected to the fundamental coercion of needing to work in a social democracy. The fact of the matter is, uh, if I were to go out and look for jobs right now, first of all, like I'm going to, I can talk about America. I don't really know all the shops and brands over in, in, uh, let's, let's pretend that sure. we've got Nordic America. Okay. I go out and there's a guy on the corner who is, uh, offering, uh, coconuts for, for dicks. Um, for dicks sucked and then there's a corporation next door that offers slightly more coconuts for more dicks sucked and there's another corporation you can choose between all the corporations but all the corporations are fundamentally offering the same thing which is you get money so you don't die you suck the dick that's how it goes it's all the coconut island that is the core problem is that you don't have a choice in whether or not you participate in that if you try to remove you are punished severely for that you are left out of the out of the uh out of the equation you're not allowed to be a part of society if you don't consent to being a part of all this corporate shit i was born into this world why do i why do i have to choose between four different companies that want me to soak suck their dick for a different value of coconut what if i don't want to suck dicks for coconut what if i have something else i want to do should we not build for, towards a society that allows people to do the things that they want to do, especially when we have as much abundance as we do now? I don't think that, um, like, I, like, like, I don't think that what you've said here, like about income mobility, addresses this problem at all. Sure, people can make more coconuts, and that's great. I'm sure it is better to get more coconuts than less coconuts when you're sucking dick, if you got to suck dick to, to get the coconuts. But the reality is that you have a choice between a hundred different firms, all of which are offering you some ver variety of this many coconuts for this many dicks sucked that's just the reality of the system that you've proposed and there's no way for anybody well, to step out of it that's why i mean this is this is this is how these coercive structures exist they force you to be a part of it whether or not you agree with it or not there's a ton of people who um they have no choice in whether they um even enjoy or even believe the so-called benefits that you put forward are actually benefits like for example like i don't know i don't think it's a benefit to live in america and have a giant military i don't think i've benefited from the existence of a giant military in fact i think i've probably lost as a result of that the the addiction that the american state which i have to participate in because you don't have a choice you're born here you're a citizen it's for your own goddamn good go out and get a job or join the military or whatever I don't think that that is the benefit that 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 like people like yourself and people who would advocate for these governments uh, say it is. I don't think that's a benefit, but I don't have a choice. It has to be a benefit. It's a benefit whether I like it or not. So it is the coconut. Well, sure. To to a certain extent, to a certain extent, you participate in like the system. I would disagree with the characterization of the system of like a different amount of you know dicks you have to suck for a different amount of coconuts. But I, um, I do get the point. I'm, to be fair, I'm not an I'm not an anarchist, and I'm a big fan of democracy. And, and those two positions can lead towards people voting in policies that you might not individually agree with, but you might individually have to accept because you do live in both a stated system that is a democracy. But that's po potentially a more fundamental conversation. The point that well, I yeah. made about well, of course, yeah, right. But, but the point that I made about firms in general is that while it is true that the capitalist sort of expropriates some of the surplus value from the laborer, it a is lot. also true that the laborer gets something from the capitalist, right? So what does the laborer get that I'm not sure you've adequately responded to? Like a the laborer in a system, well, sure, a laborer in a system that I describe where you've got a welfare state to fall back on, mm -hmm. you can get a free and universal education, mm -hmm. you've got a single payer healthcare system that's not tied to your employment, yep. stuff like that. What you get when you work at a job where you also get a say because, you know, worker board members and also unionization mm -hmm. is the capital mm -hmm. in a risk free way in exchange for a paycheck. Sure. That's what you get. You, you get don't have to take the risk of Yeah, you get your coconuts well, no, no, and then if you're in all, so... if you're in if you're in Nordic coconut island, then you get to vote on um how on where the coconuts are shifted around, but you still got to suck the dick and you only really get the coconuts to choose from. That's the problem. I recognize. No, well, wait, wait, no, hold no, on. Wait, 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 you let me finish my not, turn. You're it's not, my turn. Hold you're, on. It's my well, turn. No, no, but do you my No, goodness. no, it's it's hold on just one second. So you just engage with the, you know, forget, forget about the dick sucking thing. What I'm trying to explain is that when you have a system of capitalism in the you know in like a nordic country that i'm describing you get to utilize the capital 
in exchange for a risk-free paycheck, that is your preference in that system, not necessarily to start a business, but, but what choice? But do you rather have? to utilize the capital for free. Yeah, but what do you mean? You're not utilizing it for free. If you don't work, you don't eat. Well, risk-free, I should say. Yeah, it's not risk-free though. It's not risk-free. First of all, we know that that's that's completely magical thinking. The idea that any job is risk-free, like that you could even say that in a world in which we well, like I, that you could even when, when, wait, I, when, I, on, say, no, when no, I say when I say it's no, risk-free, no. what do you think I mean when I you're, say you're that? saying that there's a risk-free paycheck? But the reality is that's such a that is a massive that is a massive massive overstatement. Well, like, no, remember we exist. Your, your business we exist could, in a world. You, hold on, you, you got to let me talk now. We 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 exist in a world in which people have worked for companies like General Electric for 30 years and then walked away with no pension because their their plant closed down unexpectedly because of a decision they had no say in. Now, in a, in a social democracy, you could say, well, maybe they might have had more of a decision. Maybe they would have been able to vote in that. Maybe the factory still would have gotten closed down, but at least they got to vote. That made them feel well they also might have a more robust universal pension system Yeah, they might have a more robust universal pension system that's fantastic they're getting more coconuts for the dick sucking that they have to do but they can never choose to not suck the dick that's the problem they can Even, choose but to they start can. their own business but but so then they can choose to try and become the person who makes somebody else suck their dick that's like this is this is the thing like well, do you no, see how you all, wait but this you, is so re you, this is so reductionist it's not though. reductionist I mean, you, you wait this is a reductionist this is fundamental and this is a this <laughs> you, is a you wait, think wait, wait. reducing capitalism to sucking dick for coconuts is not reductionist <laughs> no i don't think it's reductionist <laughs> it's i think it's wait wait i think it speaks very perfectly to the to the fundaments of what we're talking about i don't think that's reductionist at all what we're pointing out here or what i'm pointing out here is that you have a choice between a whole bunch of firms that all operate functionally more or less exactly the same. There is very, very, you have very little actual decision. At the end of the day, you are going to be purchased as labor by someone else. And you might be able to negotiate here and there a little bit for for a different type of, of exploitation, but you're ultimately being exploited and you don't have a choice in that. You are in a cage from the moment that you're born. And if you try to leave that, you have maybe some success. Maybe you can go leave and live in the woods and maybe you can be happy with that. A lot of people can't. Um, maybe you like some parts of society and you want to participate in those and that's great. But the reality is that if you, they, they have, the, the, the structures have been built, the economies have been laid up in such a way, the way that, that, that control over closed borders exists means that you're born into a place where you have to follow all the rules whether you want to or not. And I would say that even in the case of social democracy, that's a very extreme imposition. You are told the benefits that you get are this, 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 that, and the other thing, but you never had a choice whether you actually want those specific benefits. You don't really have much of a change. Uh, you might have little tiny ways of doing it, but nonetheless, you are forced into the coconut dick sucking dichotomy from the get go. That is the problem with these structures. That's where we are. That's where we differ as you being a capitalist and me being not a capitalist. That's like, a fundamental difference you think it's just you think it's right for a world to exist in which people can basically make you suck their dick for coconuts and and you think it's more just if there's a way to become the person whose dick is sucked for the coconuts but i don't think so i think you should be able to ex exist outside of that paradigm if you so desire because i actually advocate for you know personal freedom i don't i think that social democracy is a is a improvement on some fronts but that ultimately it perpetuates a lot of the core problems that we have with our current system and so i don't buy the sales sure page. so 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 here's my question um mm -hmm. let's say we lived in a nordic country but yeah. everyone got three thousand dollars a month sure. and they didn't have to do anything for it it was a ubi would you yeah. say we've accomplished your system because they ultimately can do whatever they want now no because first of all i mean no, I don't think so. I don't think that anybody can really do what they want. Uh, there's other issues that are. Why not? Well, wait, they have the money. They have the perfect. They have income oh, and security. Did you want an answer, or did you think, or were you like trying to capitalize on like a dunk or something? Do you want the answer or no? Well, no, no I'm, I'm trying. It's okay. a genuine question cool. because if someone well, you got the answer. The if it's a genuine question. You got to do whatever the they want. If you, if you've got, you know, if it's a genuine, why, why I understand they, what you're saying. How does this not solve your, my friend, for your my system? friend, my friend? I understand. Yeah, go for it. The the what you're what you're what you know the 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 hypothetical. I get it. First of all. Uh, UBI, if it could happen, that would be fantastic. Of course, I'm never going to fight against a UBI. I think UBI is a, is a is a great thing. But let's be real. First of all, there are going to be um, strings attached to that, uh, whether it's you know citizenship. That's not the hypothetical, um, though. But okay, what's the hypothetical? Give me give me give me the, the hypothetical, full hypothetical. Is though. everyone gets three thousand a month for nothing and put into the system? Okay. That ultimately that's what they get. They can do with it as they please. Okay, sick. So three thousand dollars a month. 
um, is is meaningless to me because I have no idea what the cost of everything is. I have no idea what that actually buys for you. Or if obviously it talking me... within an American context where okay. three thousand a month is a living wage. Sure. Yeah, it depends on where you live. But sure. Yeah. Um, that's great. That's a step in the right direction. I think that's fantastic. If everybody gets a living wage, that gives people a whole lot more ability to just not participate, and that also puts pressure on companies to offer things more than just coconuts for dicks. Um, but I don't think it solves all the problems that we're talking about. I just think it's a step in the right direction. Um, I think that a UBI um, has other issues that are uh, structural. Like, for example, um, I imagine that, like, obviously, if we want to go into a complete hypothetical where every person in the world just received $3,000, I don't know what that even means anymore. Um, but if we're talking about a government that provides for people's needs um, and and allows them to seek out their desires, that's great. That's super fantastic. And I'm not entirely opposed to that system. I just, uh, uh, I, like, I guess this is kind of like what you're talking about is kind of like a centralized, uh, like, co like uh, Soviet-style communist vision where there's like a government that takes over and mandates $3,000 a month and then you have an economy you can participate in kind of like mostly willingly, though there's, you know, still some aspects there. I think it's a huge step in the right direction. Now, if it actually happens... I don't, I don't know. A lot of people seem really opposed to UBIs. UBIs seem to be really difficult to win over. Um, and well, they often, and they often seem not necessarily what I'm saying. Right. But like that, that's the thing though. It, 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 I mean, I can imagine all kinds of things. Like I could also imagine a world in which like, um, like an alien, like aliens fly around the earth and they deliver food directly to humans. And I think that would completely change our society. If there was like an alien force, well, sure, which but just obviously food like drugs. a communist, when you talk about your system of communism, mm -hmm. I, I never try to make the argument of like, there's literally no way that this is going to happen because the truth is obviously we're not going to see communism in our lifetime. And I'm not sure that that's a stretch, right? But I just don't know. Like, I mean, engagement. global communism, no, but I think we can see communistic projects and I think we can see examples of, um, of communist, of, of commune like structures. I don't think we're going to reach global communism, um, in our lifetimes, well, sure, but I don't sure, really, but, but that's, that's not, again, the, that's not my goal. That, that's kind of the point, right? Is that, is that if if we're talking about like a prescriptive system, I'm just, the point that I was trying to make wasn't that it's unlikely. It's just that if we're prescribing a system, I'm not necessarily arguing like the probability of it happening uh -huh. yeah. necessarily, although I've engaged in that on the social democratic side um, mm -hmm. because it's, we're more arguing like which system would work better. And, and the point of the UBI example is that, well, if you've got the money that you need in, in mm -hmm. so far as you don't have to work and yeah. your main problem with social democracy is having to suck the dick for the coconuts, as you put it, mm -hmm. I don't really see how a system with a generous UBI would not fall under a perfectly fair and equitable framework that you've outlined. Oh, I mean, because there's all kinds of aspects. I mean, because you've, you've slimmed it down to a single issue. The uh, I don't think that the, that the uh, like... Uh, the coconut island coercion part is the only part of all this. I mean, of course, because we haven't even touched on imperialism or colonialism or any of that. Exploitation of, like, the exterior of, like, the foreign is a huge part of even social democracies. But basically, any capitalist system relies mathematically on the exploitation of frontiers, um, which are shrinking. And that means it's turning inwards, and we see the problems that we've seen. Like, this has been like, again, I don't want to jump into a bunch of theory shit, but like this has been discussed to a great extent. There are mathematical issues with the structure of of capitalism and, and maintaining consistent growth when you don't have places that you can conquer or take over anymore and claim as your own. Um, but like putting all that aside, I mean, I think that's a huge issue with 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 capitalism. But I would say if we're just talking about this particular issue, a three thousand dollar UBI provided that, you know, in this hypothetical that that three thousand dollars is worth what it what three thousand dollars is right now, that'd be fantastic. That'd be an incredible world. And I think what we would see is we'd see a lot of companies go out of business bad companies go out of business because they're providing things that aren't actually needed, that they are driving demand for Funko Pops or whatever the fuck else. All these, uh, these, or Facebook is a great example of like, like, uh, like a company that just eats up everything until you basically have very few options besides Facebook or a basically another company that's identical to Facebook. I think what we would see is we would see people with a fuckload of free time inventing things probably free things that wouldn't even charge anything um, because they don't have to worry anymore about about going and working to, for some asshole who makes you suck their dick for coconuts or or 
uh, we wouldn't ha or they wouldn't have to uh, feel like they're um, if they come out as trans that they're going to be like kicked from every workplace. They could go and they could make those decisions. They would be they would have significantly more agency in um, that equation of like, well, do I want to go work for somebody? So what if a company uh, in a in a in a society where everybody gets three thousand dollars? Well, a company can't just say, well, we'll pay you minimum wage anymore. They have to offer something. They have to offer something in return, which means that there's an actual bargaining chip. So this is a huge step in the right direction. Of course, it doesn't deal with um, with things like imperialism. It doesn't deal with things like, uh, you know, uh, state like ideological state apparatuses and stuff like this, which is a is another part of the conversation we could discuss. But it does address what I'm talking well, sure. about. Yeah. But you'll uh, notice I think I, you'll well, notice something, which is sure, go on. that um, UBIs are uh, very fraught projects. Some places have been able to implement some level of a UBI, but what you'll notice is that UBIs tend to be really, really tight to the line. They give you the absolute basics you need to survive, not to live well. And what that ultimately does is it's a concession that puts you in a slightly better place where you can negotiate slightly more. But at the end of the day, if you really want to live an okay life, like everybody else out there is, if you really want to sure. live okay, then you got to go suck the dick for the coconut. And that's the problem that I have, well, which is that I think obviously between yeah, yeah. typically the UBIs are five hundred and thousand bucks a month. Just depends on the sure. experiment. I mean, I get what you're saying. That's why I try to put it at a living wage uh, for the hypothetical. Yeah, but, I mean, in that hypothetical, you know, I, that I sounds great. That, that sounds fantastic. I would love that. I would love if that. Were no, possible. of course, and I yeah, yeah it, it it sounds like well, yeah, sure. I think what it sounds like, um, you know, as as a summary, is that uh, as a social democrat, as you perhaps more communist or anarchist leaning. Mm -hmm. Uh, it sounds like we would agree on most every sort of uh, policy prescription, whether it be like, you know, maybe a UBI or a more expansive welfare state or universal education. Um, we just have these sort of esoteric disagreements on the I don't think uh, the mode. Uh, the well, I, is, I, I don't think they're they are. Because like, I, I think like we can both agree that like a thing that would do good things is good. But like, I don't think it's it's esoteric for me to point out and say like that this this like the social democracy that you're talking about ha has not and does not offer uh, uh, the, the 3K UBI. It doesn't exist. Like, it, it, there are things that are... Well, no, that when, are, wait, when, wait, hold on, when hold on, I hold say on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to finish what I'm saying. Hold on, I want to finish what I'm saying. There are things in well, yeah, that structure that prevent stuff like this from happening. There's a reason why, in the past, we've seen states crack down on all kinds of different things that potentially threaten the system as it is i don't believe that we will ever see a ubi that matches that three thousand or any number that re represents a a um livable wage because to do so would demolish the economy as it currently exists it would be good for humans it would be great for the average human being if we could give everybody a basic like a, a basic sustenance amount of resources whatever it could even be not even money it could just be the food and the 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 needs maybe you fill out a, a thing or something and you get which one i don't know there's a million different ways you could do this um but if we were able to do that that'd be great but it doesn't happen because to do so would mean that it would be a lot harder for Walmart to get people to work for them. And then you have a problem of Walmart going away. Oh, we can't have that. It's too big to fail. That's going to damage the quote unquote economy. But the reality is, is that we exist in a, in a current paradigm where the economy literally doesn't serve people. It serves a very small fraction, a very small, increasingly small fraction of people very, very well. And that is a structural sure. issue with the type of economy that we're talking about with capitalist economy because of accumulation. Well, uh, yeah. Because of, yeah, those no, things I, I, I was, are hard I was, to resolve. Yeah. Sure. I, well, I agree certainly that they're hard to resolve, but I would just say that they, they're they they're more likely and, and they're certainly able to be resolved uh, under sort of a social democratic framework. I, I mean, this, the reason I call it esoteric, this sort of discussion, is just that I, I don't think most people are going to really have the... Um, have these types of discussions. This type of discussion isn't, uh, you know, consumable for most every uh, person. You can say know. that I've that's maybe by designer. Well, you get, I, you obviously understand what I'm saying. I, I don't think most, like most Americans aren't like, you know, seething for a change in the mode of production. I mean, they kind of accept how it is. Now you could say that that's a problem. I just call it esoteric descriptively, not, not as sort of a, a, a you know, a blight on the conversation or anything. Um, you know, so no, nothing 
wrong I mean, way. I think it sounds like what you're saying is you think that mine is unpragmatic, but I think yours is unpragmatic. And like we both. Well, think... I, I would say that it's it. Well, it's odd to call mine unpragmatic when mm. the systems that I describe have actually been implemented but almost in their entirety. But see, that's where you're lying. Countries. That's where you're lying. This is where the sales pitch. Well, what comes are you in. talking about? Because this thing that you offered, this uh, what, what, 3, what, what system wait, wait, that on, I advocate for has has the not $3, been thousand dollar UBI that we agreed on. I don't advocate wait, wait, for three thousand dollar UBI. Oh, okay. That was a hypothetical I posed to you. Okay. Okay. Wait. 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 That's a hypothetical that you then use to say. Oh, well, we agree on all these solutions. But the reality is that the solution changes if that UBI doesn't give people the basics that they need. If you get a UBI of 500, you still got to get a job. You still got to go or you're going to live a bad quality of life. You won't be able to pay rent. So when if a social democracy is able to effectively implement and absorb the blow from the change that would come from that, I would love to see that. Of course I would. But see, we don't fundamentally agree on that particular thing. I believe that people should be free to do as they will when there, unless there's no other option. Like, for example, I don't think that we have much of a choice in our in like our currently maybe someday but currently we don't have a choice in the fact that we get hungry that we get thirsty we need shelter maybe someday we will but for now those things we have to deal with everyone anarchists everybody everybody's got to eat but we have abundance we have extreme abundance we have technological abundance we have everything abundance and what we see is that social democracies don't implement they will not undercut their economic structure they will not undercut the giants of their of their of their uh, economic structure they and have done that though, but they haven't. Not meaningfully. They like, have. Like when? Do you, do you think? Do you think it's not meaningful when you have ninety percent unionization, a third of the members on boards are workers, a super, you know, a social assistance program that guarantees the actual expenses you have? Do you, do you think that's oh, not I think a, those are good things. a meaningful? Ch- I mean, I think, think those well, are good on, things. Well, that's not, hold on. No, no, that's not the question. Do you think that absent those things and present those things, that comparison, do you think that is not a meaningful difference in the amount of sort of coercive element that capitalism might have on those workers? Because I would say that it is. I think it is a reduction of the coercive element, but it does, but it is not a, a complete solution, not even close. Um, and the reason being is that, um, like I said, the problem still remains, even in countries with 90% union, unionization. You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be sucking the dicks in order to be a part of the dick sucking union. You, that's the problem. That's that. <laughs> wait, and what? I'm course, confused by your analogy. Ex- wait, wait, explain. Wait. If you, you have, you can't join the union unless you're working for the firm that the union. Is oh, a part I see. Of. I, okay, that you makes sense. Just the so analogy got yeah. got lost. Tell me, you, I get what you're, you're saying. If you're not sucking now. dicks, okay. you can't join the dick suckers union. That's just how it goes. So that's that fair. Is, you, and they, this is they a, have a sign outside the unions must be willing to suck dick to join. Well, that's fair enough. If it's the dick suckers union, yeah, you got it. If it's the dick suckers union, you got it. Same thing as if it's the tractor fixers. That's true. And the thing is, is like, uh, like that's fine. Um, those are good things. Those are good improvements. I love. I think unions are great. But there is a problem with unions, and this is a this is something that like uh, w- would be some lefty infighting maybe between unionists and uh, and and trade unionists and and anarchists or or some other types of mar- Marxists, which is that um, you know m- people such as myself would 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 point out that the unions ultimately still are adhered to that exact economy that we were talking about. That yes, um, they can win things to be better. They can make you suck less sticks to get more coconuts. They can, you know, uh, leverage power in order to win certain victories. But at the end of the day, the union is still a subsidiary to the firm. The firm has to exist in order for the union to exist in response to it. And I don't think that should be the way that it goes. I think that we we that, that that like that's an improvement, yes, but not the improvement that I'm looking for. It's not enough. It's not enough for us to move to a world that's slightly more just. And I don't think we should uh, 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 we should just advocate for like a social democracy, um, especially when and like this is going to step out of the world of hypotheticals and into the into what I believe you know to be reality, especially when we're coming up this hard against climate change. Climate change is going to decimate economies excuse me, all around the world. It's going to decimate humans all sure. around the world. And um, right now, the way that it's set up, um, the way that things are looking is that basically like Elon Musk and and Bill Gates and, and all of these very, very top percentile people are going to be goddamn fine. They're going to be perfectly fine. But more and more people are going to be left to die. Not to, not to uh, have slightly worse conditions, but to die. There's going to be a lot of people left to die as a result of this. Um, and... That's not acceptable to me. 
So a social democratic solution does not answer, does not even come close to answering issues of climate change. It doesn't come close to answering issues of imperialism. And so that's why I don't buy the pitch of a, of a social democracy. I don't know why I should quote unquote fight for a social democracy if I don't think that a social democracy a adequately solves the issues I'm talking about. It's great. It's really, really good. And I'm very happy for the, for the Nordic countries that they have um, strong unions. I genuinely believe that that's great. I'm sure their quality of life goes way up and they're able to enjoy things more. But that's not my goal. My goal is not just to win union membership. I think that union membership is a path to uh, buying people the space that they need to make better changes. I think that's one possible path. I think there's many paths. Um, but the core problem yeah. still remains. And and it will go no, get I, worse as, he, as, as climate change barrels down upon us. And what happens if... Uh, if, if I'm to buy the, the sales pitch, which I don't because I, I don't see like the promises that are being that are being made, being delivered upon in a meaningful way. If I was to, to lean into that sales pitch, but then two months down, you know, two years, three years, 10 years down the line, the entire country collapses and everybody it declines into into eco fascism because there is a rush on resources. And one guy owns, you know, a nearly a trillion dollars worth of assets which he guards with uh, you know elite guards that the government has been lobbied to allow them to have which is the case in america so i don't find yeah. that ed like so, i yeah it's just it, to me it seems yeah well i'm i'm advocating obviously the the you know i, I think par partially a closing statement you know i'm sure, not sure, sure how long you want to talk oh, but what i was going to say is that I think that the best system that we could implement today is a social democracy. I think that there's a lot of empirics that would prove that it's able to balance the potentially coarse of elements of capitalism with worker representation and democratic frameworks in the workplace. I don't think it faces a lot of the structural problems of socialist or communist solutions. And I also think that they're more realistically implementable. Um, I do think, however, that, you know, it, you know, in, a, in like a Star Trek style society where we have a replicator and like there's you know, no issues with resource wealth and we can, everyone has whatever they want, should they want it, uh, and then thusly they will have it. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that type of conversation would make more sense in that type of society. But, you know, in a world where we do have sort of this, you know, the, the distribution of scarce resources, the study of economics, uh, where, where economics is not just a relic, but rather a, uh, you know, an actual sort of uh, form of thought uh, in the Star Trek universe, um, that I, I think a social democracy makes the most sense. Um, and I think, honestly, even if you're a socialist or communist, I mean, it seems like uh, we would agree that uh, social democracy is preferable to many of the systems that we have today. Uh, again, the only reason I call it an esoteric discussion is just that um, it's, it's a, sort of a step beyond uh, what we might advocate for, for the most part, on the mm -hmm. ground for things like expansive welfare spending, income redistribution in the form of taxation, you know, corporate, sure. uh, you know, corporate policy that tries to more, you know, humanitarianly organize the supply chain, uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's that's uh, sort of what I would say. OK. And I guess my closing statement then would be uh, like I, I don't buy the pitch. I don't think that the social de democratic system is, uh, especially for places like America, any easier to accomplish than other potential systems. In fact, I think it's actually considerably harder in some cases. Um, I think you can win small victories, and those are great. And we should push for small victories because anything that we, the average person is incredibly deprived in comparison to those who are the most well-off in our country. The income inequality is ridiculous. So I think we should push for more than that. But I also just think that, um, like, a, a, a ship that's sinking, um, it, it doesn't make a difference if you have a system that, that removes one drop from the ship versus a, a system that removes two drops with the ship if the ship is sinking. It doesn't matter. Two drops versus one drop doesn't matter. One might be slightly better, but it's not going to meaningfully make a difference when, when climate change is here. I don't think that we have the time to, uh, or we should, spend our energy advocating for an imperfect system with huge flaws that is built on the back of imperialism, slavery, and all these other things, um, when we could say, no, it's time for us to rethink things, to be bold, to rethink the way that we look at the world, and to unleash our potential. Because you mentioned in the Star Trek example about replicators. We have an analogy for that right now, which is called automation. And people are terrified of automation with good reason. I am almost, I am almost to the point of anti-automation, not because automation is bad, but because the only people who can afford automation 
is people like Mark Zuckerberg, is people like Jeff Bezos, who can use it to marginalize further people who they will leave for dead. If those people die, that would be very convenient for them because there would be no one to advocate for their right to live. So I think that we have an analogy for that. We have a world where we have essentially replicators, but because of wealth inequality, because of deep systemic wealth inequality, nobody can access those replicators. And it's being used um, like, I mean, not to sound like, like uh, you know, a little conspiratorial, but it's going to sound like that a little bit, but it is being used to keep people in place. Like, for example, uh, building robot dogs that can kill people, that can police instead of humans. That makes it easier in, in a post-automation -automa world to maintain the order without relying on people, which... That puts a lot of people in a real bad place. So I don't think social democracy addresses almost any of these. I think that social democracies and social democratic wins can make life better, but I don't think that it's enough to be worth um, devoting our identity to or devoting the bulk of our, our political advocacy for, especially given the global context that we live in with regard to pandemic, with regard to climate change and uh with regard to the um frankly not just climate change but the the utilization of of natural resource which is really fucked right now so yeah i think that's my my closing right. statement yeah well in the spirit of closing statements i will respond to none of that and i will Fantastic. just say <laughs> that everyone demon mama told me oh my goodness she's gonna yell at you she's gonna be horrible she's gonna be bad faith and you did none of those things and i wasn't expecting you to you know i I'm of course, happy. it's possible for anyone to have a good conversation, um, and it was a good conversation. Uh, and you know, thanks yeah. for for having me on. Uh, no problem. It's, uh, you know, it's been great. I thought it was a great conversation. Um, yeah, my my reputation as a, a screaming evil SJW is much, much, much overstated. <laughs> um, mostly drawn from my very direct conflicts with specific personalities who may or may not be dirty rat restreaming my stream right now. You know who you are. You little fuck. But anyway, um, yeah. So you know, I have a few a few personal conflicts, which has led to uh, a I think an undeserved reputation. Nonetheless, Econo Boy, it was wonderful uh, speaking with you. Do you want to plug your channel one more time so people can give you a follow? Uh, I'm sure they'd love to hear more of your stuff. Yeah, sure. So um, if you are interested in basically you know economic and political discussions, mostly economics, to be fair, um, you know the goal of my channel was. Uh, you know, a lot of the times when people talk about politics online, they're they're more talking about social issues and not necessarily talking about economic issues. So, if you're interested in discussions like these, uh, then you know you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's just Econo Boy. I think I typed in in your chat. It's the same. Mm -hmm. The way that my name is spelled in Demon Mama's chat is the way that my channel is spelled. So, YouTube.com/slash Econo Boy. Um, and like I said, to be fair, not all my content or even the bulk content is. Like capitalism or socialism focused it's it's more uh i try to make it more descriptive so you know if you've ever wondered what quantitative easing is or what the federal reserve does or the gold standard or like uh, should like should the minimum wage be higher you know stuff like that um or like what the effects of that would be uh, then those types of questions are the ones that i make scripted videos for uh, that are uh, pretty decent someone mentioned yeah like i made a video about mmt to try to describe that system and maybe the shortfalls of that system and so you know, stuff like that. Uh, if you're interested in it, come on over and subscribe. Uh, and yeah, like I said, you Mama, thanks for having me on. It's been a Absolutely. fun conversation. It's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for coming on. I look forward to having a conversation again with you someday. For sure. All right. Have Bye a good day. Bye for now. Bye. Oh, all right. That was really fun. Okay, that was really interesting. See, I feel like we touched on a lot of things. I feel like that was a valuable conversation. What did you...